How's it going guys? My name is Tavares and today we're going to find out everything wrong with my 200,000 mile Toyota Supra. Now before we begin this video, I want to make something very, 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 very clear. I love this car. This is one of my dream cars. I've lusted after this thing since it came out in the early 90s when I was but a wee lad. So when I do these everything wrong with videos, it's not me nitpicking uh, things about this car. It's not even me uh, talking about Toyota's shortcomings. This is me explaining to you what you might see in a car with this age and this mileage. This car has about 194,000 miles and that is a lot of miles for any car, but uh, this is also a car that is 22 years old. So. There's gonna be a little bit of age, there's gonna be a little bit of uh, degradation with those numbers. And uh, that is the point of these videos. So those of you who are warming up your keyboards for comments about how I'm nitpicking and uh, making mountains out of molehills, you can use your finger strength for something more constructive. That didn't really sound right. So here is the legendary 2JZ GE power plant. Well, this one isn't legendary, the turbo one is, but this one ain't so bad either. So this is the original 194,000 mile engine and it actually does run pretty decently. Now, this car is a manual and it has a W58 five speed, which is uh, the five speed that came in the naturally aspirated Supras and also the SC300. That five speed is uh, sort of notorious for a few faults. Number one is the clutch. Well, not exactly the clutch. It's actually the input shaft bearing that the clutch lies on. So the input shaft bearing is basically where the input shaft uh, goes into the transmission and the clutch goes on top of that. And after a while, that bearing uh, can go bad and it starts moving side to side. It has a bit of play in it and there's a groaning noise whenever you go into gear or uh, you're in gear and you just give it a little bit of gas. There's a groaning noise coming from the transmission and it's very, very common on these cars. My Lexus SC300 had it on both its W58 transmissions that I put in there and uh, this one definitely has it. So I'm not gonna be keeping around this engine and transmission setup for long, I don't think. Maybe I will, maybe I'll fall in love with this uh, drivetrain. But overall for its age, this car and this engine bay looks pretty good. It looks very, very honest. It doesn't look like a show quality anything. I mean, there is dust for, for days, but it is in decent shape for its mileage. And it is a very, very good uh, base for which to mod. Now I will be doing a full tune up in the future. So that's, it's not gonna be a uh, issue with this running. And honestly, it just got its oil changed the day before I bought it. So I'm not gonna have to worry about that for a while, but uh, it's good to know that this is in really good running shape. And I mean, for a Toyota with 200,000 miles, it's barely broken in. What isn't broken in, however, and in, in fact, it's just broken, uh, is this vinyl wrap. I'm not a huge fan of vinyl wraps, but I do know that uh, they can really make the car pop. Uh, especially if the paintwork isn't the best underneath. This actually is a decent example of uh, what vinyl wrapping can make your car look like. This is a very good uh, satin white pearl and it pops in, uh, in certain lights and it's a very good reflective, uh, sort of semi-reflective vinyl wrap. The only issue that I have with it is it looks like it's a uh, sort of lower quality wrap. There are some seams that are not great, frayed edges, especially right here in the wheel arch. And apparently they, uh, they tried to repair something with either paint or, or something. I, I, I can't tell what this is, but it left this, uh, this nasty scuff mark uh, right here. Since the car is white, it takes away from uh, the aesthetic of the car. I would have liked these small dents, you know, just taken out right before they did the wrap. This could be done with a paintless dent repair like pretty cheaply, but now that there's a wrap on it, it makes it that much harder. It's very noticeable. I mean, if I took this car to a car show, there would be points off for that. Good thing I'm not, I'm not a car show kind of guy, but uh, that would not be uh, a really good thing to have, uh, especially on a car this expensive. Like I can, look, I just ripped off a piece of the vinyl uh, right here and you're, I'm pretty sure I'm not supposed to be able to do that. It is a pearl white car uh, to begin with. So uh, it wasn't like a radical color change or anything, but uh, I, I might take this off just to see what kind of paint is underneath and maybe I can polish some life into it. But uh, that is a big, big if. I'm sort of scared because if one panel is completely the wrong color, then I'm sort of screwed and uh, now I have to repaint or re-vinyl wrap it, which is very, very expensive. So if we move into the interior, it actually 
has aged very, very well. It proves that Toyota knows how to make a car that withstands the test of time. I do have to say that the previous owner recovered the front and rear seats. He remade them in this red, which is a bit loud for my taste. And I like a red interior, but this is a little bit too bright, but I digress. The rest of the dashboard has fared very, very well. With the exception of a few little dials, there are fingerprints and scratches sort of everywhere. The steering wheel is really kind of past it, but the steering wheels are really easy to replace. So I'm not really faulting the previous owners or Toyota or anything for that because the sun uh, in the sunshine state gets to be quite harsh. One thing I don't like is that these panels are loose and I believe that there are some screws missing because I found some extra screws in the center console. So I think the previous owner was uh, sort of screwing around, screwing around, get it? He was trying to uh, do some mods to the gauge cluster area or something because uh, you can see that there used to be switches here and uh, now there aren't. Now they're just kind of gaping holes in which I'll have to replace this entire piece. But uh, everything else um, that hasn't been touched by the previous owner, that hasn't been modified, is looking really, really good. Uh, with the exception of this, I mean, this is this has been modified. This is the speaker. And uh, this actually, the speaker grill comes off, but uh, I believe, I think I can fix this with a bit of glue. So I'm not too worried about that. Everything else is, uh, is very good. This is a uh, really nice looking Supra cockpit with the exception of this eight ball shifter, which I hate. Some people like it. Uh, some people are into this sort of thing. I'm more into the stock look. I I'd like a TRD shifter or maybe just a stock shifter that came in like the six speed that looked really cool. So this is a Viper alarm. It's a Viper 791 XV and uh, this is the only uh, remote that I have for it. And the remote is broken, as you can see, but it was taped and then he put aluminum foil right here, but it's done so poorly that I can, I have to press it down in order for it to work. And when it works, it plays a little jingle. It, it just incessant, listen. What's the point of that? Since this has such a bad connection, uh, it's basically going off all the time in your pocket. And if you have this thing uh, dangling on your keychain, it'll consistently go off. So this is something I'll have to fix uh, or just bypass altogether because I hate these alarms. Uh, I have one of these alarms on my truck and it just, it just pisses me off to no end. Imagine listening to that while you're driving or just walking down the street with the keys in your pocket. But falling apart interior panels and also annoying key fobs don't even register uh, as far as problems with me. So what I'm more concerned about is how the car looks underneath. And I actually have not put it on my lift before. This is the very first time. And I'm a little bit scared, uh, but I'm also a little bit, uh, say, optimistic because uh, this is a Florida car and I know that uh, with my wife's car, which does have a lot of miles. It almost has the same amount of miles as this car. The fact that it was a Florida car meant that it didn't have any rust at all. So uh, hopefully that's the case with this and hopefully all the bushings and all the uh, all the control arms and all the suspension components are in good shape. So uh, yeah, let's get it up in the air. Here is the engine and it's way worse than I thought. Uh, it's actually exactly what I thought. There is a fair amount of oil. There is a, a lot of uh, seepage here and it's uh, from two places. One is that line right here. This is uh, the power steering line. Uh, and there's also a fair bit of oil uh, leakage coming from what looks to be the oil pan or further up. I can't really tell, uh, but there is a lot of oil down here around the pan, around the pan gasket. And it's just stuff that happens with time uh, after the rubber degrades and yeah like right here you can see that the uh, bushing for the steering rack it, it's just completely past it it is uh, saturated with oil and uh, this is a really easy mod uh, it's a really easy repair and it costs around 20 bucks to get an upgraded polyurethane bushing but uh, i think i will be doing that uh, pretty soon it actually looks quite good uh, other than the oil leaking uh, everything looks to be in decent shape, used, not new, but in decent shape. The sway bar bushings could use a little bit of love, but again, that is to be expected. Uh, I can just replace that with polyurethane uh, components. The uh, ball joints for the suspension, uh, they look a little bit uh, tired and there is a crack on one side. Not the end of the world. Uh, I do know that these control arms are actually quite pricey. I think that they're, uh, they're like $600 
uh, for the set. So I can probably get the ball joint pressed in for a lot less than that, but uh, we'll have to see if that's the case because I know that that's the case with the Lexus and these are even more sought after than the Lexus ones are. Uh, so that might be a, a little pricey option, but I'll see if we can find a DIY solution for that. But uh, if we move further downward, the transmission also has, actually, up, you should come with me. Here is the transmission. This is a W58 uh, five-speed manual, and it is just covered in oil. Uh, it's covered in grease and grime, and uh, it's really nasty, but it's not anything that can't be cleaned off, and it might be leaking from, uh, from here. Uh, this is the speed sensor uh, sender, speed, speedo, cable. it's not a cable, but it could also be leaking from the engine bay because what happens with oil is that over time, if, if it gets heated up and uh, you know the car's in motion and there's wind kind of sweeping it everywhere, it's really hard to find out where oil is coming from unless you give everything here a really deep clean and I think that's what I'm gonna have to do. All right, now we're in the back of the car and it's the same story here. Usually on cars of this era, there is a noticeable amount of rust on the, uh, the frame rails right here, on the, uh, the pinch welds, I believe that that's what they're called, but uh, the portion that the factory jack goes into uh, on the sides of the car, those tend to rust out and these are looking really, really good. I mean, there's a little bit of corrosion, but it's just on the surface. And there is nothing on either side of this car that I would uh, consider calling rust in any aspect. But uh, I do notice that right here, I don't know if you guys can see it. Oh, that's slightly off camera. Let me, uh, yeah. So right here, it looks like somebody tried to jack up the car uh, using a hydraulic jack or something, and they didn't put it on the frame rail where they should have. And they basically jacked up on the floor and they just made a big dent. Uh, right here, and it's actually uh, pulled apart the seam. There's, a, there's some seam sealer right here. Uh, they didn't break any welds, and it doesn't look like it went into the cabin, uh, but it's, it, that's gonna need to be fixed. So I'm gonna have to go inside, maybe hammer it out with, uh, with a rubber mallet, and then put some seam sealer, and it should be good to go. But uh, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is user error, everybody. This is what you don't wanna do. But if we take a look at this rear diff section, this is the, uh, I, I actually don't know what the gear ratio for this is. Maybe you guys can tell me in the comments. I believe it's like 4.1, uh, and it is an open differential. It's not an LSD. I wish I had the LSD, but that is a very, very expensive upgrade uh, for this car. And the twin turbos did have LSD, and I think the auto turbos uh, the six speeds and the auto turbos also had LSDs, but they were different gear ratios. Uh, and those are very, very strong. These are less strong and you can see that uh, the axles are also not the, the beefiest. <laughs> uh, they, they actually are quite small axles, but they're in good shape. And uh, they're gonna be fine for what I wanna do. I am gonna eventually get an LSD, but uh, this diff is gonna be okay for, for the time being. Now, there is a fair bit of leakage from the diff. Again, I don't know if that's from the axle seals. I don't know if that's from uh, maybe some diff seal on the back, but it's just caked in oil. And uh, this oil actually looks like it's a little bit new or maybe it's just, no, it's just caked on there and it's shiny. And that's, uh, that's how you know it's quality when it's, when it's just shiny. But if we move right along, you can see the exhaust, the weird exhaust that goes from one to two to one, again, I don't know what the point of that was. Maybe it has something to do with flow, or I don't know. That actually looks pretty decent. Uh, the bolts are rusted, but in serviceable shape. I don't think that they're gonna come apart on me uh, if I try to take them off. And moving on to the suspension, uh, I see that the same story that I had in the front, the ball joints and the, uh, the axle boots and the sway bar end links, they're all in sort of perished, but in good shape, in, in, uh, in serviceable shape. Uh, so one of, some of these are gonna have to be replaced, but uh, it shouldn't be that bad. I'll just get a uh, kit where it has all the bushings made of uh, polyurethane, and then that will be a nice upgrade, especially for more sporty driving. All right, so some bushings need to be replaced, but uh, that is the case with any car. I mean, you could, you could have a car with 60,000 miles that has the same sort of wear, but Toyota really knew what they were doing with this car. And I'm very happy that uh, this is a good runner. It doesn't have any accident damage. And I think it'll clean up really nicely as well and, and be the Super GT car that I want it to be. So in the next episodes, I will be exploring what it's like to drive a naturally aspirated Super around and uh, seeing what that whole experience is like 
for better or worse. So uh, stay tuned for that. But if you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. I would appreciate it immensely because it gets the word out that I love doing stuff like this on cars I love. You can also hit that little bell next to the subscribe button and that means you get to be part of my notification squad. That means you get early access to my videos and uh, you get notified every time a video comes out. So uh, those of you who say first, 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 yeah. Notification squad, represent. If you'd like to contact me, you can hit me up in the DMs and wheel well. You can reach me at Instagram and Twitter, that is the real Tavarish, and facebook.com slash asktavarish. Asktavarish at gmail.com is my email, and I do read every single email, even though I might not get to them uh, right away. I mean, guys, let's be honest. I, I, I do get a, a ton of emails, so be patient, and I do read every single one, and I do appreciate everybody that reaches out. But until next time, this is me telling you that on cars like this that look awesome and fulfill your lifelong dreams, you guys need to wrench every day.